Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. The average citizen in America, wherever he lives, does not expect to be robbed or assaulted or victimized. And the average criminal, although his chief weapon is surprise, usually does the expected after his crime. Usually he is quickly caught. Occasionally a criminal does the unexpected. Take a look. All right, let's see. His crest tail. Suspects are heading west. We'll set a roadblock up right here in the west. In case they double back, we'll set one up in the east end of town, right here. Get these orders out right away. Right. Alert all units. Look for three men in a black sedan. I'm going to crest tail. Bank employees were able to give the police a description of two of the three bandits. At the roadblock west of Cresdale, the most probable point of contact, the officer reported that no vehicle resembling the bank robber's car had approached the checkpoint. They've had plenty of time to reach either roadblock. Yeah, they probably took one of the back roads out of Cresdale. That won't get them out of the area. They're still hemmed in. Yeah, but what are they doing? Probably stalling for time or figuring to switch cars. I'll have some other units check the back roads. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Both checkpoints claim no contact with suspects. Have other available units check the back roads, garages, and motels in the area. 10-4? 10-4, 2150. You know, they're probably figuring to steal another car or rent one. I'll be scared enough to have a motorist switch with them. No, I wouldn't be surprised. I think they've got time to double back and head east. Come on, Hanson, we'll check the other roadblock. Stuffing yourself, Curtis, and get into this fast. I'm ready. You're a little too ready, Geller, with that gun. That guy was too nosy, Caxton. He looked like he was getting ready to do something. You heard Lorber's orders. No gun play unless we had to. Explain it to him. He's running the show. Ditch these clothes in the brush, away from the car. Now, back to the highway, and after we cross it, we're in the clear. It's a mile to the beach. We've got 18 minutes. Let's go. What gets me is if they're smart enough to avoid the roadblocks, wouldn't they pull a job in an area they can't get out of? 1430 to 2150. 1430, that's that. 2150 by. Go ahead, 1430. 1430. I believe I've located the suspect's vehicle on Dry Creek Road, half a mile north of the main highway. And it's apparently abandoned. All right, use caution. The suspects might still be in the area. But check the registration and all stolen info on the vehicle. Alert all units in your sector. Have them search the Dry Creek Road area. You stay with the vehicle. I'll be right there. 10-4? 10-4.
Did you find anything, Edwards? No. Keys are gone. Nothing in the car, no registration. Well, maybe it's stolen or somebody's trying to make it harder to trace. Possibly both. Uh, well, either way, it looks like the getaway car. The motor was still warm. Other units report in yet? Not yet. Well, there's another angle. Maybe they broke up and started across country on foot. That's supposed to roll there after the car stopped. Otherwise, it'd be crushed. Bank robbers dropped it. Is that what you mean? It could be. There's a lot of smudges on it. We'll have the lab check it for prints. We'll have the car check for prints, too. Well, what have we got so far? Bank robbery, attempted murder, ineffective roadblocks, and an abandoned car. Does that mean anything to you? Three weeks ago, there was a bank knocked over at Marble Point. Three men were in on it. Roadblocks blocked every route of escape. The car was found abandoned a few miles from the scene of the crime. It was a rented car. No trace of the suspects. You think it's the same gang? Looks like the same M.O. Don't let anybody touch the car till the lab checks it for prints. After they take the car, you patrol the area south of the highway. Toward the beach? Yeah, the main highway's pretty well covered. If they're on foot, they'll stay clear of it. Right. That's you and I check headquarters. See if there's any news in the sedan, then we'll go down to the beach area, too. Perfect. Not a soul around. Yeah, and there's the boat. All right, set up those poles and make like fishermen. Why bother? There's nobody around. Do what I tell you. Barbara won't bring the boat in close until we signal all clear. You know, we're getting a better break here than we did at Marble Point. The water's not so choppy. Give me that pole. Pull the caxton. Ah, we'll have to stall till it goes away. Act busy. Fuss around with a reel, anything. I'm for waiting out to the boat right away. That skin dive isn't going to take anything. It'll be even better if he doesn't see anything. Even if the cops found our car, they'll be searching the roads, not the beach. Hey, he's coming toward us. Relax. Afraid you guys picked a bad spot for fish. Is that right? I ought to know I've been out there. Probably I scared them away. Tell you what, though, there's a pretty good place to fish around the point, about a half a mile. You'll know it when you get there. There's several fishermen just pulling them in. Thanks for the tip. You're, uh, you're through for the day, huh? No, I'm gonna have a smoke and go out again. Out beyond where that boat is. Say, uh... Isn't it pretty dangerous going skin diving alone? Oh, not when you're careful. The thing you gotta look out for is the seaweed. A friend of mine got tangled up in it last spring. But we went down and got him loose. Well, what do you know? No danger, really, as long as you're careful. Curtis, signal the boat. This has to look like an accident. We'll put his mask back on him and dump him in the water by those rocks. Find him, it'll prove I was right. It is dangerous to go skin diving alone. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, go ahead. Twenty-one fifty. Have you got the registration and stolen information on that vehicle yet? Ten four. License is a 1953 four-door sedan, registered to Diamond Auto Rental Service in Harristown. For a check with the registered owner. Get the name and a full description of the last person to use that vehicle. 10-4. Rented car, like the Marble Point job. Looks like you hit it. We'll find out. Is 1430 checked in yet? 1430 went out of service about five minutes ago for investigation on the beach at Barker's Cove. I'm about a half mile from Barker's Cove. I'll proceed there immediately. 
But how is he? He's unconscious when I pulled him out of the water. I got the water out of his lungs okay, but he's got a nasty bruise on the back of his head. We're going to need more help to get him up the top of the bluff. I think I can make it once I get on my feet. You know, I thought he hit, us, hit on one of those rocks out there, but he says three men jumped him. That's right, fishermen. Now, for no reason. Do you see anybody else on the beach? Oh, it's completely deserted. Well, as soon as we get him up top, I'll look for footprints. Is this yours? I think I think one of the fishermen was eating out of it. bank robbers, Caxton, Curtis, and Geller had boarded the boat and were well on their way. While patrol units still searched for them throughout the Cresdale area, Bill Martin, the skin diver, told the highway patrol of the apparently motiveless assault by three fishermen on the lonely beach. That's just the way it happened, Mr. Matthews. No argument at all. They slugged me for no reason. How's your head feel now? Oh, it's pretty sore, but I feel okay. I will have a doctor check you when we get to town. Did you find anything? I found three sets of footprints going down to the water, but can't tell which way they went. You could only find that boat that was out there. What boat? Well, there was a small boat offshore, about 150 yards. Whoever was in it might have noticed which way the men went. And if they were looking toward shore, they would have seen you slug, too. Yeah, that's right. They would have done something, not just let me lie there. Well, can you describe the boat? Well, it was a skiff about 15 feet long with an outboard motor. All right, we'll check the boat and send for an ambulance. We'll take this into the lab for fingerprints. We're getting right to the car. We're staying right here until everybody on the pier has a chance to forget we came in on a boat. We're not in any hurry now. We don't anybody to think we are. Sure, Logan. Geller, you and Curtis stick close while I brief Caxton on the next job. The next job? Yeah. It's the bank at Fairgrove, and we're working it right away. Right. So soon? And so close to Crestdale? It'll work in our favor. The police aren't expecting another job right on top of the other one. They're thinking we're getting as far away from Crestdale as we possibly can. Yeah, I guess you're right. And there's another reason why it has to be Friday. Or not at all. Thursday, an armored truck is bringing in a hundred grand. Payroll for the Hedling Mills. It's to be picked up on Monday. Unless we, uh, do them a favor. A hundred grand? Yeah. Like the idea? I'm sure about the money. But can we get away with it? Why not? We did it at Marble Point and in Crestdale. Now we got a fine pattern working. Just keep it rolling for one more job, and then we'll, yeah, we'll take it easy for a while. We use a boat again for the getaway? Naturally. How else could we get away from Fairgrove? After all the trouble we had at Crestdale, I don't know. Yeah, you're worried about nothing. You ditched the car a mile from the beach. Who's going to link the bank job with the accidental death of a skin diver? You forget about Crestdale. Think about Fairgrove. Yeah, a hundred grand. Okay, Lover, give. Now, uh, you three will hit the bank at 10 a.m. Uh, tonight, we'll go over the maps and figure out probable roadblock points and the escape route to the beach. Same procedure as Marble Point and Crestdale, huh? It works, why change? Now, uh, come on, let's, let's get to the car. Thanks for getting it to me so fast. Right. Let's talk to headquarters. Lab ran a quick check on those prints. Any luck? Yeah, the guy that dropped a couple of the cars, the same one that left the carton on the beach. And they were the bank robbers. Why did they slug Martin? Well, the only thing that makes any sense is they were trying to cover their getaway. They didn't want Martin to see him wait out to the boat. Now, that figures. No point in hitting Martin if they were just going to walk up the beach. So now we know. Next time they try it, we grab him. You think they'll try again? Look, they got a good thing going for them. They have no idea that we know they're getting away by water. So the next time they try, we're ready. That's a long coastline. How can you tell where they're going to hit? I can't. We'll figure out a plan that can't miss. 
Usual roadblocks and also string some nets along the beach. How about this? We didn't have to wait long. It's Fairgrove. So near Crestdale. Yeah, these guys are in a rut trying to take on banks. We got the roadblocks figured for Fairgrove, haven't we? All right, set them up. Dispatch all available units and points along the beach near Fairgrove. Right. Oh, one more thing. Get in touch with the Coast Guard. Tell them they might have to patrol offshore. Anything comes in, get it to me fast. I'll be in Fairgrove. Slender, probably of small stature. Use caution, these men are armed. Attention units 2119, 4210, and 3116. Proceed to the ocean front at the following points. Slow down. Fourteen thirty to twenty one fifty. Twenty one fifty by. Fourteen thirty. I've just spotted a car that matches the description of the Fairgrove bank robbery car. It just turned off in the Crescent Road from the main highway. Waiting instructions. Proceed with caution. I'll have 1810 block the other end of Crescent Road where it joins the highway again. Okay, hurry it up. Make yeah, this change yeah. as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah. Thirty to 2150. 2150, by. I've lost that sedan. Did it uh, come back on the highway? No, I just talked to 1810. He's covering the intersection. I'll double back. that brush to the beach. It's only a few hundred yards. but they can't be very far away, probably headed for the beach. Well, what's your position? At the foot of a dead end trail, it's uh, about two miles from the north end of Crescent Road. All right, stay at your car. Keep the road blocked. If we flush him out, they might try to get back to their car. Right. Well, let's go. They just found their car two miles down the road near the beach. We'll take up the position on the bluff with the others. Kids are in a solar run. That's a boat. Forget the boat. Set up the fishing pole. Somebody might be watching from those houses over there.
They're going to head for the water as soon as that boat gets in close. That doesn't give us very much time. They wouldn't hesitate to use those kids for shields. we got to get them out of there. How do we do that? I'm going down there. You know, with miles of beach to play in, those kids certainly picked a fine spot. All right, you tell Roberts to get over here as quickly as possible. No gunplay. Until we get the kids out of the way. Get the rifle out of the back. They might make a break for it before we get in close. Kids, what are you doing? Making a cake? Who ever heard of making a cake out of sand? Out of sand? What are you doing then? We're looking for money. Money? Have you found any yet? No. That photo's getting nearer. Should we signal? Not with that guy there. Where till he moves on? You know something? I think you're looking for money in the wrong place. I know where there's a lot of money buried. Right down the beach in that direction. By those houses? Yeah, by those houses. Now, believe me, if you don't go, there's going to be that much more left for everybody else. All right, what I'll do with you, I'll make a deal with you. I'll buy this sim from you, then I'll go back. No! Let's go, Kenny. We clear down the beach by the time we get down to the boat. Ah, any luck? Nah. All right, hold it. Drop your gear. I'm a police officer. Get your hands behind your head. Look, mister, is this a joke? Well, you're under arrest. What for? Fishing? Robbery and attempted murder. Oh, you've got us all wrong. I have. Uh, open that tackle box. Come on, open that. Nice bait these guys use. Check him and do what's necessary. Well, there's one for the Coast Guard. Okay, move out. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. The Coast Guard advises that one of their cutters picked up a man in a boat a mile off Fairgrove. He is identified as Miles Lorber. The Coast Guard will release him to the Highway Patrol at Greenport. Tell the Coast Guard commander at Greenport I'll proceed there immediately. It's a great day for the beach. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. You know, I envy those kids. I hope they find some. <laughs> Let's go. week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week.